Good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael Romelli here with the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for August 28th, 2019, recorded around 2.42 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, well, we do now have Hurricane Dorian, which is now uh, crossing through the U.S. British Virgin Islands and portions of Puerto Rico on its track towards the north-northwest at this point. Uh, and is expected to uh, re expected to intensify into a significant hurricane somewhere here in the Bahamas. Exactly where, though, is still very uncertain, and uh, we will have to keep an eye on that. Uh, Dorian has passed through the Lesser Antilles with the center reformation further north as of yesterday, allowed it to spare from land and intensify. Uh, this afternoon into a Category 1 hurricane with maximum staying winds of 75 miles an hour. And uh, we are going to continue to monitor how strong the ridging is uh, towards the north of this system with Bermuda. And also this upper level low that is uh, positioned somewhere right in about here. And as this kind of drifts off towards the west over the next few days, Dorian will sort of pivot around that upper level low and the shear will be as such that the shear alignment around here, because remember, uh, the shear with the upper level low will be kind of be coming out like that. So once Dorian gets to roughly in about here, Dorian will encounter a significantly favorable environment uh, in which the shear vector will be aligned with the direction of movement of Hurricane Dorian. And uh, as such, this will be allowed to intensify into a significant formidable hurricane as it approaches uh, Florida or the southeastern United States here within the next few days. Taking a look at the latest European model run, this is the uh, 12Z guidance, the, uh, the uh, run that just came in here, initialized around 8 o'clock uh, this morning. You can see Dorian's vorticity here, it's weaker uh, in the model field, so the model do not, the, this model does not have a good clear a picture of exactly how strong Dorian is currently. Uh, but you can see here, we go to the next 24 hours and Dorian uh, will find its way, uh, let's get that out of the way, <laughs> Dorian will be able to find its way past the U.S. Bridge, British Virgin Islands and then start to take a turn more towards the northwest. And then eventually by 48 hours, uh, Dorian will uh, sneak between uh, the upper level low, which is positioned right here in the building ridge of high pressure after what was Tropical Storm Arian, or, uh, yeah, Aaron uh, continues to head off towards the north and east, allowing a stronger ridge to be building back in. And we've seen that be pretty consistent today uh, from most of the model runs. By the way, uh, this model uh, and these graphics are from tropicaltidbits.com. Levi Cowan from Florida State University. He's a great guy. Go check out his website. Um, but you can see the upper level ridging, the height lines are starting to build in over top of Dorian, and that should allow Dorian uh, to continue to uh, turn back more so towards the west here over the next few days. And as such, by within 72 hours, Dorian is well on its way to strengthening, turning further west. And then by 96 hours, it's approaching uh, the Florida coastline here. And a couple things to keep in mind here. Uh, the GFS has a weaker ridge of high pressure, uh, which would allow Dorian to more so get close and then move its way out here. Uh, but the 12Z GFS has actually kind of shifted more so back in towards uh, the north central Florida area. Uh, with Dorian here on the uh, ECMWF, the European model, uh, making landfall somewhere in uh, southeastern or the southern part of Florida here uh, by the five-day forecast period. Uh, as such, this will still be a major hurricane, a very ample time to uh, strengthen out here. And we look at uh, Dorian's inner core that has developed. This is from COD Meteorology. And you can see Dorian's inner core is pretty well organized. Some clearing beginning to on go. I think that's probably just a temporary clearing. I do not think that is the eye itself clearing out, but we will have to wait and see. Uh, but you can see where Dorian's inner core has formed and recon from earlier this, uh, earlier, uh, this morning has found pressures to be lower and a swath of hurricane force winds here confined to roughly about 20 miles or so, and uh, portions of the U.S. British Virgin Islands have recorded 
a wind gust as high as 111 miles per hour with sustained winds approaching hurricane force. So for that reason, uh, Dorian was upgraded to a hurricane here within uh, the last little bit. And you can see the IR satellite presentation loop Dorian has continued to indicate more better uh, banding today. Uh, you can definitely see more of that banding with the traverse outflow pretty much going on each side here. Uh, and that is going to lead to uh, what would presumably be rapid strengthening once it crosses uh, into the Bahamas uh, later over the next few days. And uh, tonight, I do suspect that this will continue to strengthen. And this could be a major Category 3 hurricane or higher uh, by the time it approaches uh, Florida or somewhere along the United States um, southeast coast. So really anywhere from Florida to Georgia to South Carolina still needs to be monitoring the progress of the storm as uh, this could take a deviation more uh, anywhere from uh, South Carolina or it could uh, steamroll right into Florida. There is still uh, a divergence in models. If we actually take a look at the model guidance suit here and we'll go back and look at the current model guidance and uh, we just have the newest ones in, not currently. Uh, but from the 12Z model guidance, uh, or the 18Z guidance now, since it's just updated, uh, here's Hurricane Dorian, and over the next 48, 24 to 48 hours, a northwesterly trend will begin, followed by a west, or more of a westerly track, and more of the guidance has focused itself now in on central Florida uh, here over the next uh, five days. So this is going to be very interesting uh, to see exactly how uh, this progresses, but a track uh, more so in towards Central Florida is what we're leaning towards right now. So people in Central Florida need to be paying very close attention. Now, anyone in Florida uh, needs to be paying very close attention to the progress of Hurricane Dorian as this will be a major Category 3 or higher hurricane by the time it approaches the Florida uh, coastline uh, within the next four to five days. Uh, again, bringing significant wind, storm surge along the coast, flooding and isolated tornadoes uh, to places inland and near the shore. Uh, but again, cannot stress this enough, uh, anywhere from Georgia, Florida, Georgia, and South Carolina need to be monitoring the progress of the system. Let's see if we got the newest guidance from that. And here's the 18Z guidance suggesting that this will, is a, a Category 1 hurricane and most of the model guidance suggests that this will be a Category 3 hurricane or higher here uh, within the next few days. So we will be continuing to monitor the progress of Hurricane Dorian. I will have another update uh, roughly around 8 o'clock tonight going over the 5 o'clock advisory and the uh, 8 o'clock intermittent advisory. For now everyone, that's going to be it. Stay safe.